Welcome to part 3 in this series and we start by fitting the new crankshaft sprocket. Now this requires heating in an oven and they do say heat it to 150 degrees centigrade which is what I did because you don't want to overheat it because it would affect the properties of the metal. Now I'm not sure exactly how long it would actually need to be in the oven for I tried for 15 minutes and that didn't seem to be enough. So you may have a bit of trial and error here like I had. So I advise being prepared that the sprocket may not just slide on as I assumed it would. So attempt number one. So I thought it should just slide on. which it didn't. And obviously as soon as it's on there it's going to start cooling down so you don't really want to hang about. So I thought perhaps just tap it with a piece of wood and it would go on. But no. So attempt two. Oven now turned up to 160 degrees and sprocket was left in for another 15 minutes. So effectively it's been in the oven for half an hour and it's now at 160 in case my oven was running on the bit of a low side and it still wasn't really going to go on. Now the problem is you don't really want to be hitting the crankshaft and as you'll see here the crankshaft is moving which isn't a great thing really. I really was hoping it would just slide on. So now I've got to take it back off again before it cools down too much. So I was getting a bit stressed at this point as you can probably tell. So attempt three, oven now turned up to 170 degrees and the sprocket was left in for another 15 minutes. So this was a little bit more successful. Um, and I did use a drift, a hollow drift that was out of the hydraulic press kit for putting bushes in. So it did go on a lot easier. Now whether I should have left it in the oven perhaps a bit longer Perhaps giving it half an hour in the oven. So it's on now, so you, you've gone to a point of no return. So you've got to make it fit. <laughs> I didn't like that. No, I didn't like that. A final way to check if it's fully on is to shine a tiny torch at the back to see if any light shines through the keyway slot. Lights here. So you can see the light is shining through so you know it's not on. Once you've actually installed it correctly, no light should be visible. The workshop manual said to heat the sprocket to 150 degrees centigrade, but gave no indication on how long this may take. Clearly I was well out with 15 minutes, and in hindsight I should have shown more patience with the heating process. Resorting to hitting the sprocket on is very unwise, as damage may result to the crankshaft or the bearings. So before I forget, we best remove these two rubber oil pump seals that are still stuck to the engine block. And then we need to fit the new timing chain to the new crankshaft sprocket and align the timing marks. So we get our new timing chain out, which is still nicely wrapped up. Now what I'm going to use is a coat hanger here, the old fashioned wire ones. They were quite useful because you can bend them around and make them into a hook. Like so. Because we need to feed the timing chain up and hook it somehow. So I'm going to drop the new timing chain down. We've got to get the two coloured plates on the chain lined up with the two indentations on the crank which we have now and then we just simply hook this up to hold it there make sure they still stay in alignment though as you can see the chain's gone a bit slack there so now to fit the new timing chain guide rails so I'm going to start with the tensioner one which as you're looking at the engine is the left hand side. 
So with the chain nicely supported, I'm going to just clean the thread on that bolt. No, the other way around. That's better. And then we can just slide that down and put our, I say bolt, it's probably a screw actually. I'll say fastener. And then using a 10 millimeter socket, tighten the fastener. And then we can move on to the other side now. So this is the fixed guide. And that simply drops down. I'll clean that bolt as well. Now this one drops down and if we have a look underneath we should see it line up with the peg. There we go. And then we'll pop that fastener in as well. And again with a 10mm socket we just tighten it up hand tight. And then we will need to get a torque wrench now. And quite a small torque wrench because we've only got to torque that to 28 newton meters. So it's not very tight. Wait for our click, there's our click. And then we do the other side. I always seem to click it twice, not sure why. Now we need to refit the cover caps. So I'm just going to give them a little wipe over because there's some grit there and just pop a little bit of engine oil on just on the rubber seal. I was surprised new seals didn't come in the kit but I should imagine they'll probably be they'll probably still do their job. So that's nicely oiled so pop those in And they're held on with a 10 millimeter hex, like we've got here. And then we need to set our torque wrench to 18 newton meters. That's that one. And now the tensioner one. Like so. Okay then, so the next job is to fit the new camshaft sprocket. So again, we'll open up our little box of goodies and take out a brand new camshaft sprocket. Note the bolt is still the original bolt because I don't think you need to change that. We'll just pop that there. So we've now got to line up the marks on the chain to the camshaft sprocket. Make sure you don't drop the chain. So we've got the triangle as can be seen now. I'll mark that with a pencil. There's the triangle and again it's got to match up with the coloured link on the chain. So make sure that the two links at the bottom on the crankshaft are still in position. And then we can bolt that in place. I'm just going to pop the bolt in loosely for the moment. And that's with an 18mm socket. And then I'll put the holding tool back in. So that we can torque it nice and tight. So this is torqued to 102 newton meters. Wait for the old click again. I'll probably do it twice like I always do for some reason. I suppose technically it should only be done once. And now we're on to fitting the new tensioner piston. So this has got its own little box in the box. And just remember that black plastic end is not a cap like I thought in a previous video. It's actually part of the tensioner. So make sure that stays in place. So 
So we need to just pop that in. It's already been compressed. Um, so you may need to push it down and recompress it if it's popped up. But mine's still compressed. So it's simple enough just to slide it in position. You might have some difficulty there if it's extended itself. So this is a 19 millimeter socket or your fingers to so tighten up the cap. And then we need to torque that to 63 Newton meters. It's quite awkward in there. Not the easiest thing to actually get to. The torch was actually blinding the camera there, so I've had to sort of shadow the torch out. Okay, one click. And we're going to go for the second click like we keep doing. Okay. So now what we need to do is release the tensioner. And the theory is you poke a metal bar down and sort of shock it into action. Here we go. Bang. So that's now out. Again, make sure your links are still lined up on your crank and the chain. And now we can fit a new crankshaft seal. So I'll show you the crankshaft seal. It's the black ring there. I've coloured it in red. And we need to pop it out. Now you may need a 44mm seal driver when we come to put the new one in. But we're just going to use a punch and tap that old one out. I do believe this must be replaced. Otherwise you'll end up with oil leaking out. So when fitting these seals, it's quite important that you actually push down evenly only on and only on the metal outside part. So I'm going to choose a 44mm seal driver and this way it will push the seal in correctly because we don't want to distort it by hitting it with a hammer or something on the edges. So the old hockey puck, I do like the old ice hockey pucks, they're quite useful. I'll put a link in the description below for those. So we'll get this new seal. I'll just check it's the same size as the other one. You never know. Yep. And I'm going to pop a little bit of oil on there just to help it slide in. I've also pre-cleaned that. So line it up nice and flat and then using your seal driver tap it in with some short sharp bursts. There we are. And no damage has been done to the seal that way. Okay. Now ideally you should replace the other timing cover seals as well. So we've got a few seals here to replace. I'm just going to give it a quick little dust around and also remove the old sealant that was there from presumably the manufacturer. There should be two spots of that sealant on each side and we will need to replace that sealant before we pop this on. So we've got two oil seals. We've got a large one there for the input. And then there's a smaller one there which is the output from the oil pump. Now I'm just going to check this, make sure it's the correct orientation. Which looks about right. So we can now gently pop that into position. And make sure it's all nicely tucked in. And no bits are sticking out that could get trapped. So that's looking good. So 
we can now go back to the engine and make sure it's all clean and remove the old sealant which is there and on the opposite side there'll be some as well which is where the two machined faces are met I'll highlight those with a couple of photos I think so this is the sealant I'm going to use I think you can just use RTV so this is the join between the lower crankcase and the cylinder block and we need to apply sealant to these two spots so we'll do that now so you don't need much it's a, only a small amount but it's just in case they're not perfectly flush that manufacture so I'm now just going to apply a little bit of oil to the lips of the crankshaft seal so that it slides on nicely and doesn't get damaged and we also need to prime the oil pump this might be a little bit messy so at this point it's also worth getting the oil pump ready and lined up for the crankshaft so align the flats of the crankshaft with the flats of this oil pump before we put it on and now we need to refit the timing chain cover so it's worth noting we have nine fasteners that require a 10 millimeter socket we have one pan head fastener which is a torx 30 and one oval head which is a torx 27 and i think a photo might be suitable at this point and here is the tightening sequence for the timing chain cover which does need to be followed so some care will be needed here because you have got to align up that oil pump the flats of the oil pump with the flats on the crankshaft and also make sure you don't knock the oil pump seals out of position because that would be quite disastrous so that's gone on nicely now I'm going to show the order that these screws should be put back in now I'm only popping this one in just to get this one out of the way but it's actually screw number nine so I'm not going to tighten that I'm just going to pop it in okay so the sequence is number one which is the top left then number two which is down the bottom here number three which is up by the alternator number four is far left Number five is back over near the water pump. Number six is back over the other side. So I'm just checking to see which ones are which. So number seven is bottom and slightly to the left. And then number eight is bottom again, but further to the left. And then number nine is that middle one. And this will be number 10, which is quite awkward to get to. And this is that pan head screw. And then lastly, we have the larger oval head fastener, which is number 11. So we now need to torque all these. So screws one to 10 are 12 Newton meters. I won't video this part. But you get the general idea. So some of them are quite awkward to get in 
can get to. These ones are a lot easier. And then lastly, we need to change the torque wrench to 18 Newton meters for the larger M8 bolt with the domed head. And here's some reference photographs. So here's that important bolt layout for the timing chain cover, noting those different fastenings. And then the sequence for the tightening of those fastenings. Here's the 48mm press sleeve I used on the crankshaft sprocket, though the assumption is I didn't heat it enough and it should have probably just slid on. It's still a rather useful set, especially if you're doing wheel bearings. This one was by Burgeon and is item 6123. And this is the bearing seal driver kit, showing the driver I used, which was 44mm. And the main timing chain kit was by Laser, and that was item 4408. And the other useful kit was the Laser 4770 to help get the accessory belt off. That was in the previous video. And here's a photo of all the parts that have been removed so far. Worth noting that that crankshaft pulley bolt is an essential replacement. And finally, a bit of a close-up showing the scuff marks on the timing chain guides. So you've been watching replacing a timing chain on a Mini 1R50 and this was part three. So thank you for watching and hope this video helps you replace your timing chain in your Mini R50 if you need to. This video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in May 2021 and I'm also available on Instagram and Facebook under Coats and Gators.